Father, we continue in the spirit of worship and in the spirit of listening to Your Word and to Your plan for us. Thank You that we can also participate in worship today as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. We are a people of prophecy, aren't we? That's what we believe as Seventh-day Adventists, that the Lord has called us in a special way to be involved in His work in the last days. Revelation 1 and verse 9, John writes, I, John, your brother, and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos because of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And then he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day when I heard a loud voice like a trumpet. John has by far the most amazing and dramatic and bizarre vision that God had ever given to a human being, and he was instructed after receiving that vision to distribute it to the church, to all the churches that he was able to send it to. And after giving the prologue of the circumstances and the importance of the vision, he writes those words in verse 9, I, John, your brother. It's an interesting way of him to begin because we know he was older by the time he'd written this. He had been very involved in the development of the first century church. He was regarded with high esteem. He was known as an apostle, as an elder. He was known as the beloved of Jesus. And of course, we know him as John the Revelator. But it was a stark expression of humility for him not to choose to use any titles when he wrote the Revelation vision. He simply referred to himself as John, not Pastor John, not the elder as he refers to himself in his epistles. In the gospel, he never refers to himself by name. He just refers to himself as the beloved. He doesn't use any of those high and and wonderful titles that have a place within the structure of the church. But when it came to addressing the church with the Revelation vision, he simply says, I'm your brother. I'm John. And it's important that you understand what God's plan is for you in the last days. Even though I'm in exile, I'm in solitude, I'm being persecuted, the devil is trying to restrict and prevent me from performing my ministry. God has overcome that, and He has given me a message and a vision for all God's people for all time. I, John, your brother. He uses the word fellow partaker. It's one word in, in Greek. It's uh, soon koina known. Some of you have heard the word koinonia before. It means fellowship. It means community. It means the church. John, your brother, and fellow partner, fellow partaker, it would be quite appropriate to say fellow church member. And we participate in this work together in the trials of this life, in the tribulation of earth. We are brothers and fellow partakers in the kingdom. We, we, we could assume He means the kingdom of heaven. And the perseverance or the patience or the steadfastness required for all believers to be able to endure the time of tribulation until the coming of the kingdom of heaven. And the circumstances of His isolation, but He promises that despite those circumstances, the Holy Spirit was with Him. We have a few ceremonies that we do in the church, not as many as other denominations or organizations, but the few that we have are intended to be very special and very instructive to who we are as a people. We are a family. We are a family. That is what God has done for us. Did any of you grow up in a church where, you, where everyone called each other brother and sister? 
It's not as common. Okay, some, some. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there's still uh, among some of our, uh, you know, uh, ethnic churches, Hispanic. Uh, if you go into the South, of course, in the Bible Belt, and, and uh, that idea of brother and sisters is, is much more common. It is, it, it's shifted in our community today, and, I'm, and, and that's okay. By the way, I'm not saying it's wrong that I don't say, hey, brother Mark, hey, sister Bambi, right? We don't, we don't use that. However, the reality of those things should still be appreciated. You are my brother. You are my sister. When we participate in the Lord's table, we are uniting through this ceremony and by faith to this reality that we are a family and we are all part of the last day movement together. We are family. We are John's brother. He is our brother. We share of the same tribulation. We share of the same hope in the kingdom of heaven. We share in the perseverance and patience that's required to traverse this earth until that time. Can you think of another place in the Bible where it talks about the perseverance or the patience in the Revelation chapter 14? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. Same word, perseverance, steadfastness. Now, those of you seated on this side, I know most of you, call many of you by name. You may not know everyone that's seated on this side. Hi, guys. You may feel more holy over here because you're on the right side of the church. And I understand that. But they're on the right side of the preacher. <laughs> when we hold the elements in our hands, no matter where we're seated, no matter what's going on, we are enjoying this ceremony together. And we are saying, Chuck, even though you're over there, way in the back. I can barely see you. You're my brother, and you're also Edwin's brother. And Valeria, you're their sister. But not only is it for this community, it's for the entire Christian community. When we participate in the Lord's table, in the, most churches, this is a 13th Sabbath, most of the colleagues that I spoke with at camp meeting, uh, the rest of our, many of our churches are taking uh, part in the Lord's table today as well. I know Camelback is, I think PV is, Tempe is, um, I know many of our Hispanic churches are as well. When we also participate, we're not just saying that we are a family here in this room, in this congregation, but we're also a family with our fellow believers in this community that they too are part of the extended family of God. We are all sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. And then let's take that a, a step further. Not only are we declaring our familial, uh, brotherly, sisterly relationship with this community, but we're saying it with every believer in the entire world. When we participate in the Lord's Supper, when we take of these elements, when we call God our Father and we uh, join in this, we're saying that we're also brothers and sisters with the believers in Ukraine right now and with those in New Jersey <laughs> and with those in China, Nicole. They're also our brothers and sisters. And in Mexico. And all over the world, we all join together at one Father's table. And we declare our familial ties. We declare that we can say, along with John, that we are brothers and sisters and fellow partners and church members and partakers in the trials and tribulations, in the kingdom of God, and the perseverance which is in Christ Jesus. And we can also claim, as John did, that the Holy Spirit blesses that, and we too can be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And we can hear the voice of God when He cries to us.
That's why we do this. That's why we do it. I realize you have to do it by faith, the, the emblems and the participation, but it is a very wonderful example that Jesus, again, invites us to do. It pleases the Lord when we do this. It pleases Him. Do you guys like it? Any of you have kids that have grown up and moved away? Do you like it when Stefan comes back? You, uh, uh, first, you shook your head. You didn't know where I was going, didn't you, Mom? Okay, come on. You like having your kids come back? And you get to sit with them. And you get to eat with them. That is what this is. We all join together by faith. And we come to the Lord and we say, you're our Father and we're your children. And we've accepted your sacrifice and the promise of your soon coming.